Birds are beautiful, but unless you're watching for them, we don't get to observe them that often. Unless you can find a way to not only lure them, but to catch them while in your yard too. That's where something like a camera-enabled, battery-powered, app-connected, modern architecture bird feeder comes in. Now, if this sounds like expensive overkill, well, yeah, it is, but it also has the potential to be really fun. I recently got the Bird Buddy feeder here from husband Roger as a gift, so in this review, I'll put it to the test. We'll take a look at what it's like to set up and to install, how well the camera works and how long the battery lasts. Maybe most importantly, I'll show you what kind of wildlife I saw during my four weeks with it and if the supposed AI bird identification works or not. Now, a bit of a heads up here. While this feeder seems fun and educational, it is very expensive for what you you get and despite being super excited about it I found it has a lot of shortcomings but are they enough to make it feel cheap I'll peck away at the pros and cons to get you a final decision what are you getting with a smart bird feeder in essence, the Bird Buddy here is a device to spot and identify birds that come to the feeder using everyone's favorite buzzwords artificial intelligence or AI Smart bird feeders are basically bird feeders equipped with a camera module and a wireless connection chip allowing you to get an intimate look at birds chowing down on your bird seed buffet. Bird Buddy, like some other more expensive bird feeders, also have companion apps which use AI to try to identify the bird for you. These feeders are battery powered and have some type of motion detection too, which will activate the camera whenever it detects a bird. Finally, smart bird feeders must be weather resistant to protect the electronics from rain and other weather conditions. Bird Buddy comes in a nice package, but there's not much inside. You get the removable camera unit on top, which is actually quite large and fat. Underneath, there is the feeder unit itself and a small cup to fill it with. The construction is all plastic, but the design is nice and modern with a narrow seed container behind clear plastic. There's a divot in there to slip the camera in, and that stays in place thanks to the housing's built-in magnet. Bird Buddy's recyclable plastic housing is supposed to be weatherproof and it feels both light and reasonably solid, but how well this is going to hold up after a few years could depend where you live. Also included in the package is a post mount with screws and a metal hanger hook. If you want to wall mount it, you have to purchase a wall mount kit separately for about 39 US dollars. I was surprised, however, at what you don't get with this feeder. Bird seed is not included. Now, I'm not an animal. I wasn't expecting a five pound bag of sunflower seeds, but I was actually hoping for a small sample bag so I could get started luring the birds right away. But as it was, I had to wait until I could get to a store to buy some. Now, for the price of Bird Buddy here, I'd love to see a very small sample bag of bird seed included in the package so people can fill it right away while they source out more bird seed. Speaking of value for price, I'm also surprised at how small the seed holding capacity of this feeder is. The bin can store around 3.8 cups or just under one liter of bird seed. It seems like very little and I was refilling mine every two days. You'll want to place the feeder somewhere it's going to be easily accessible to you because you are going to be filling it up a lot. The small capacity seems like a downside for me right out of the gate, but we'll see. To get started, you need to fully charge the camera with the included USB-C cable, which connects into the top of the module. Now for waterproofing, it's covered with a small silicone stopper. The stopper though doesn't have any type of anchor, so don't lose it. Now I will say, I think this is kind of a lazy and cheap design choice. Most silicone stoppers, when they're placed in the top of a unit that's going to be outdoors, have some kind of a lanyard that will permanently connect them. So you can always ensure the cover is going to stay in place and connected. This just seems like another small corner that's been cut. Next, you'll download the Bird Buddy app so you can connect to your home's Wi-Fi. Connecting your Bird Buddy to your Wi-Fi early on can help you figure out where to place the feeder since it can't function without an internet connection. The app is going to help you stay within that Wi-Fi range. And I can say Bird Buddy was able to stay connected in my yard at extremely great distances. Now, you do also need to create a Bird Buddy account through the app because the photos and the videos that the camera takes are going to go directly to the cloud with an option, of course, for you to download them as well. I'd say well over a hundred feet from my router, I was still able to get a strong signal. So kudos to Bird Buddy for creating a really good connection. With the feeder set up and connected, I was ready to go. The first order of business was to fill the seed container. And again, I was a bit frustrated. There's a small door in the top of the back of the feeder, which opens. There is really not a great way though to get anything in there without spilling at least some of it. I suppose this is why there's a cup with a spout included, and in truth, this did help the process, but there are still several problems. 
One is that the back plate of the feeder slides up and down, and if you're not careful, you're gonna spill seed out the back. The other way you're gonna spill this is that in order for you to use the cup to really fill the feeder, you have to tilt it forward a bit, which then allows the seed that's fallen into the tray at the bottom to spill over the front. I'm actually really frustrated with how poorly designed this is. This feeder has one job and that's to hold bird seed to feed the birds, but there's no good or efficient way to fill it and not waste a bunch of seed in the process. This gets a major thumbs down. With the feeder finally full and settled in the yard, I was hoping to be flooded with bird sightings. Not so much. For me, it took almost a full week before I got my first notification. Now, I can't blame this on Bird Buddy since there's probably a waiting period before the birds figure out what's on the menu in your yard, but you might want to scale back your expectations. The Bird Buddy app should begin sending you notifications and it will record any sightings and store both video and photos and you'll get push notifications too. Unfortunately, the app is really cluttered and busy and it's kind of hard to figure out how to access your feeder. There are six tabs along the bottom of the app and the icons don't make a whole lot of sense. There's a mailbox or inbox, which is also known as history, which allows you to connect to other feeders around the world until you start seeing birds of your own. Now, once you have some sightings, you'll see your snapshots here, but be warned, you only get them for seven days. Now next to that is two squares, which stands for collection, which is actually where your own photos that you save should show up. Then there's a TV icon, which apparently also allows you to connect to other feeders around the world, but this only worked intermittently for me. Next stop is a person symbol, which is supposed to represent community. And the last tab on the bottom is the traditional settings gear. I will say there's a lot of overlap here between these tabs and understanding the intricacies and the subtle differences of what you get between each tab is not really made that clear for newcomers. For the most part, you're going to want to access the settings gear, which is where you will find your own personal feeder. Under that settings tab, you should see it at the top of the screen and it'll display whether it's connected and ready for birds as well as its existing battery life. Now you basically only have one option in here and that's to start live stream. It takes about a minute in most cases to connect to the live stream, which seems like another frustration. If you spot a bird on the feeder and want a closer look, there's a good chance it's flown the coop by the time the connection is made. Let's talk about the camera and the image quality. The Bird Buddy has a five megapixel camera module with a 120 degree field of view. Even so, you're only getting an HD camera here, nothing higher resolution than that. And most consumer device cameras, things like doorbell cameras and security cameras are HD. HD, so this is kind of par for the course. I'm happy to say the Bird Buddy camera takes clear and vivid photos. Videos record at 720p resolution and unfortunately you need to go to a pro subscription that costs an additional $15 or so a year if you want to unlock higher resolution 1080p recording. This is yet another example of Bird Buddy cutting a corner hoping to get more money from you. Most video doorbells or wireless home security cameras are 1080p so it feels like a bit of a gouge to make you pay for better resolution. Solution. But as you can see, the overall photo and video quality is actually really impressive. It's quite easy to see and identify the birds. You'll get both still photos and videos of any interactions, which lets you get a bit more detail and see different angles. Now, as I was going through some of my footage, I was kind of surprised to see several had flags that they would be expiring in one day. Just seven days after I'd installed the feeder, I was already losing access to what limited footage I had. It is possible to save these to your own personal collection, but even so, I'm again annoyed that that's all the runway I'm getting. Now, let's get on to something Bird Buddy is getting really right, and that's the AI bird identification. This feeder has excellent accuracy, I think. In case you're not an ornithologist or a person who studies birds, and I am definitely not, you never have to wonder what's landing at your feeder. Bird Buddy uses artificial intelligence to identify the birds for you, and it seems quite accurate, at least from my limited knowledge. In my four weeks with Bird Buddy, I am kind of disappointed I didn't see any exotic birds, but I did get a lot of sparrows and morning doves, so beyond those, I can't really speak to how well it identifies a bigger array of species. If you surf around the Bird Buddy app and check out some of the other cameras, it is possible to see other more exotic species. So I'll throw Bird Buddy a bone and say it looks like they're getting it quite right here. Now with both the photos and the videos you capture from your Bird Buddy, you can save them to your phone, save them to your collection, as well as share them with a wider audience using text, email, the Bird Buddy app, and more.
You can choose to ignore certain common species if you want, so you only get alerts for something truly new or exotic. Now, of course, as is becoming common, this is a feature you can only use by paying for the pro plan. My other big concern with the product is its complete reliance on the cloud. There is no SD card or local storage or recording option. The company behind the product isn't a major brand yet, and they had to rely on Kickstarter backers to get this product off the ground. Yes, there are costs for a startup to store your video, but it does open up the possibility of the bird buddy turning into an ordinary dumb feeder if the company shuts down because of shifting sales or falling paid subscribers, or let's be honest, if a better product comes onto the market. It's happened before. As someone who's had a few bird feeders out in the yard, I'm no expert, but there are a few things in the design of this feeder that make me believe it's poorly designed. For one, the hanging hook is awkward to place and it moves around a lot, seemingly making the feeder quite unstable. On the flip side, the bottom isn't flat, so you can't really place it on a table or a pedestal and have it stay put. While you could use the included post adapter for a more stable placement, of course, then you'd have to go find the right size pole or an old broom handle. Other design flaws? The base tray is massive and open, allowing copious amounts of seed to fill it so the greedier birds can have a field day feasting on what is essentially an open buffet. In a future redesign, I'd like to see some kind of a grid over it that can limit access to the already small amount of seed here. The feeder's roof also appears in every shot in the top corners. You could say this is maybe for branding, so it's easy to know which feeder all those videos are from, but it's the kind of thing that takes the focus away from the birds. At this point, it feels kind of like I'm kicking the birds while they're down, but the battery life on this feeder is also very lackluster. On a full charge, I was only able to get to about 10 days before I needed to recharge it. Now, doing that's easy enough since you can pop the camera module out and just take it indoors, but 10 days is pretty paltry when it comes to battery life, and I can absolutely see folks getting kind of weary of constantly recharging it and just giving up. Now, naturally, Bird Buddy would prefer you to pay for its add-on solar recharger, but if you're already frustrated about having spent so much on the feeder, this is not an ideal solution. Overall, Bird Buddy as a concept is a great idea. The execution is where it falls flat for me, and there are enough downsides and cut corners that I just can't recommend it. Let's go over the pros and the cons, and when you see this list all lined up here, I think you'll understand why you should probably wait for a Generation 2 version of Bird Buddy. Let's start with the pros. I absolutely love the design, and I think it's truly beautiful. The modern look is definitely what drew me to this feeder. I was also rather surprised and impressed with the quality of the photos and the videos. Birds can be notoriously hard to capture with their flitting in and zooming in and out of the frame, but the camera module actually seems to do a really good job at only sending the best images to my phone. On the downside, there's so much to talk about here. How small the seed container is, how open and accessible the base tray is, and how poorly designed the feeder itself seems. How absolutely awkward it is to refill the seed container, the short battery life, or perhaps the lack of 1080p high definition resolution that you don't have to pay extra for. The live connection takes a long time, even when the feeder is closest to my router, and of course, the entire system is reliant on Bird Buddy's proprietary cloud system with no option for recording to a memory card. The mounting options are also pretty limited, again, unless you want to pay more, and the feeder won't sit on flat surfaces. Plus, I'm not sure the all-plastic build could withstand falling from a swingy hook in a windstorm. For the very high price tag, a sample bag of birdseed I think should be part of the package to keep the excitement of the unboxing going. Now, speaking of the very high price, this retails for about 240 US dollars, which is about 325 Canadian, which I think is way, way too much. Overall, I don't think you're getting your money's worth, so if this is something that you're eyeing, I'd recommend you wait for a future generation and what I hope would be some significant improvements. I also saw some competition for this product at CES 2024, and I'm looking forward to checking out the other options out there, so be sure to watch for some of those reviews later this year. In the meantime, though, if you're looking for something to watch the wildlife, you can check out this camera from Wise, which I used and actually got really great bird shots with right now.